Okay, uh, welcome back. Uh, I've drawn on the board here uh, the graph that we're familiar with, the four node five edge graph. And you'll notice that instead of the labels, I've now assigned to each node a value x1, say, x2, x3, x4. And you know what? I'm going to call those node potentials. Okay? Node potentials. And I can denote them by xi, where i is now an index, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, or, equivalently, I can collect them into uh, a four-dimensional vector x1, x2, x3, x4. Okay? And that will be my vector of node potentials, x. I'm going to call it x throughout the rest of the course. You will also see, look, that um, I have uh, assigned values to the edges, too. And I'm going to call those edge fluxes. It's my choice of word there. Potentials and fluxes. The, the fluxes on the edges. And uh, we'll call those, you know, W, uh, I again. I is just an index. And in this case, or we can equivalently consider a vector. It would be a five-dimensional vector now because there are five edges. And we're calling them A, aren't we? So we're using uh, letters of the alphabet to denote um, the values of the edge uh, fluxes. OK, so, so you can see what I've done now. Uh, we've been studying the graph abstractly as a, just things, nodes connected by edges. Now I'm actually going to assign values to the nodes and the edges. And I'm calling them node potentials and edge fluxes. OK, so we've got now a four-dimensional vector x and a five-dimensional vector uh, w. So the next question we want to ask, ask ourselves is, what happens with these new vectors we have, x and w, what happens to them uh, when we operate on them with uh, uh, the matrix A? Because we like to operate on um, vectors with matrices. That's what we learn in linear algebra. So look, here's A. This is the incidence matrix that I've written down several times before. And let's put x here. OK, and of course, it's just x1, x2, x3 with the x4. There's four dimensions. And I've worked this out before, so I'll just do it quickly again. Isn't it x2 minus x1, x3 minus x2, x4 minus x1, x3 minus x4, and then x2 minus x4? And you remember, we decided in a past uh, lecture to christen this E. Um, it was a times x, and we called this the vector of uh, potential differences. Okay, it's the vector of potential differences. The differences um, across any given edge, A, B, C, D, E, there's five of them, of the potentials at the ends of the edges. Okay, the nodes at either end of the edges. Okay, so we've seen that before. So we called that E and we will do for the rest of the course. Let's just uh, look at this thing though. Okay, this, trust me, is... Um, this, trust me, is um, a transpose, OK? And now let's operate on that. Remember, it's 4 by 5. So we can operate on this. We can operate using this. We can operate on w, which was the, the vector of these um, edge fluxes. Let's just see what we get, OK? Well, uh, let's see if I do this right. I get minus a. Um, minus WC, then I get WA minus WB plus WE, I get uh, WB, don't I, plus WD, and then I get uh, WC minus WD minus WE. I believe that's correct. All right, and you know what? I'm going to call, and this was W, I'm going to introduce not E, but now F. And that's going to be a very important uh, notation for the rest of the course, too. But look at me. I'm going to be slightly sneaky here, but for a good reason. I'm going to put a minus. I'm not going to just do A of transpose W. I'm going to define this to be minus A transpose W. And there's a good reason for that. We'll see it in a minute. OK, so let's just write down what we, what we think that is in this particular case. It's just, you know, put minus signs in front of everything I just worked out. OK, so I get minus W A plus wb minus we, I get minus wb minus wd, and then I get minus wc plus wd plus we. 
Okay, so that's my f. It's a four-dimensional vector. Okay. Now, my e, which was a actually on x, was the vector of potential differences. It's a nice way to think about that. Now, what on earth is this thing? Well, it might help if I just brought back the uh, graph here. And if you just stare at that graph, um, isn't it true? Well, first of all, given that I've now got a four dimensional vector as the result of this, f is four dimensional, it's a, it's a property of the nodes because there's four nodes, okay? So let's stare at node one and look at the quantity wa plus wc. Well, what would you, if you're looking at the, the picture of the graph, what would you describe that as? If, if wa and wc are the flux along the edges, isn't wa plus wc, the first element of f, isn't that the total flux out of node one? I think so. Let's check node two. If I look at the picture, if, I, if you asked me to just look at the picture and work out what the total flux out of node two would be, I would, I would say it was WB because the arrow is out, minus WE because the arrow is into node two, and then minus WA, which is into node two. And lo and behold, if I check my, my vector now, F, the second component is precisely what I just said. Let's just check number three. The total flux out of node three is minus WB minus WD because the arrows are both pointing in. Okay, so you know what? I am going to define, so, so F is going to be the vector of a total flux out of node, so let's call it, of, of the nodes, okay? It's a vector of the total flux out of the nodes, okay? And I'm actually going to call it something else. If something kind of collects by going into something, it converges onto some point, okay? This is, if you like, uh, not the convergence, but the divergence of the quantity out of this node, okay? So I'm actually gonna call this the divergence of the fluxes at the nodes. Okay, sorry if that's a bit uh, small, but anyway, it's very important. E, which was A acting on the node potentials X, is the vector of potential differences. That's actually a five-dimensional vector. F, is minus a transpose w, where w is now the vector of uh, edge fluxes, and that's going to be the divergence of those fluxes at the nodes.